What is up guys, my name is Lex. We are here at Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida and today we are doing something different, something we have never done yet on this vlog. We're gonna be playing a tournament. I'm gonna be buying into a $400 multi-day, $500,000 guaranteed tournament and our goal for this day is to build a big chip stack try to survive all the way to the end of the day so that we can make it to day number two on Sunday. As you guys know, I don't normally play tournaments. I'm usually a cash player, but let's see if we can run good and maybe make it to day number two or possibly a final table. I'll be bringing you guys with me if I can make it that far, but that is enough of the intro. Let's get down to the action. Let's get to the table. Let's go. Welcome back to the vlog guys. As you can see, the Hard Rock Tournament staff has assembled a massive room here for tournament poker, over 80 tables. I'm always super excited to play a tournament here at the Hard Rock just because the staff is super professional and the dealers are always quick and efficient. We sit down at table number 39. We start out with 20,000 chips. The blinds are 100-100 and they go up every 30 minutes. Going into our first hand here, we have 6-7 offsuit playing 5-handed. When there's a limp, I raise it up to 400, the big blind and the limper call. Going three ways to the flop of deuce 5-8. So we end up flopping open-ended here. When it checks to me, I put out a bet. I see bet here half pot 600 and the big blind ends up making the fold and the limper makes the call. Going to the turn, looking for some improvement to either a 9 or a 4, which we get. It's the 9 of clubs on the turn, giving us the nut straight. Also brings in a backdoor club draw. Whenever the limper checks it over to me, I put out a $1,000 bet, which is pretty small here. I want him to call with all of his one pair of hands, as well as his gut shots like ace 3 or ace 4. He pretty quickly makes the call, going to the river, which is the queen of clubs. So we still have the nut straight, but the backdoor flush does get there. Now the limper decides to lead out. He leads out for 2300 in a cash game, I would consider raising here, but given the fact that it's a tournament, I just make the call, and I guess it's good that we did because he shows us the nuts. The bad news here, he has ace deuce of club, so he went runner runner flush against our straight, so what we thought was a good turn ended up being a bad river. We end up losing a pretty big one to start off. We took a hit early on, but now look down at ace king offsuit from under the gun, raise it up to 300. The button makes the call before the big blind puts in a squeeze. He makes it 1200. I look over at him and he looks like a thinking player, looks like someone that could possibly be putting in a light three bet here, given the fact that we're only five handed. So I think for a little bit of time and I decide to put in the four bet, I make it 3500. I decided to just go about 3x here given the fact that I'm in position. Usually 4 bet sizes are 2.5 to 3x in position, so I think this sizing is fine. Gets back to the big blind, he thinks for probably 30 seconds. I'm really hoping he doesn't jam here, that'd be kind of gross. I'd probably have to call off, but he ends up folding, so we do end up taking down a small pot after losing there with the straight. Trying to keep our cool and not force anything, we look down at jack 10 of hearts on the button. There's a limp. I end up raising it to $500. The small blind, big blind, and the limper call. So going here four ways to the flop, which comes out ace, queen, three, rainbow. We just flop a gut shot here. And if I was playing a cash game, I think I would just check this one back. But the players at my table are playing very fit or fold, which means if they don't get anything on the flop, they usually just fold and get out of there. So I put out an $800 bet here trying to take it down and if they call i'll try to put some more pressure on on the turn and it looks like it gets all the way through the small blind the big blind and the limper end up folding so we are getting a little bit back here from our first hand we're almost back to starting stack of 20,000 chips this next hand is pretty fun we're in level 2 100 100 with the 100 big blind andy i look down at king jack of spades raise it up to 300 and only the big blind calls he ends up leading out for 500 on a flop of 10 6 4 with one spade I decide to put in a raise here. I think he's most likely going to have a one pair hand, so I raise it up to 1200. I can barrel a lot of turn cards that I pick up equity on. He makes the call, going to the turn, which is the ace of spades, which is basically the perfect card for us. It's really good for our range, and it also gives us the nut flush draw and a gut shot. I continue to bet here. I bet 2000. The big blind thinks for about 10 seconds and is not in the folding mood. He ends up making the call, so I put him mostly on a weaker 10, going to the river, which is the 10 of spades, giving us the nut flush. He ends up checking it over to us, and now I think he made trips, but I don't think he has a full house. I don't think he's playing a hand like 10-4 or 
or 10-6. So I put out a massive bet. I bet 10,000 chips here. A huge overpot size bet. And he basically snap calls. I show King Jack of Spades for the nut flush. He flashes a 10 and muck. So we get lucky here. End up winning a pretty big pot in level number two. Making a nice comeback from that first hand before looking down at pocket jacks from early position, raising it up to 600 chips here. We get three callers, so going to the flop four ways, which does not come too great for our hand. Ace, queen, seven with two hearts. When it checks to me, I decide to check this one. We do have a backdoor flush draw, which would be nice to realize. Going to the turn, which is the nine of spades. Small blind leads out now for a thousand and the big blind calls. I ended up making a pretty easy fold here and the small blind ended up having ace six. The big blind had queen 10. We are still in level two with about a $26,000 stack. Looking down at pocket aces on the button. What a beautiful sight. The cutoff races to 300. I put in a three bet to 1300. The small blind pretty quickly folds and the actions on the big blind who has been a player who's been playing probably 50% of hands. He ends up making the call, which is exactly what we want. The cutoff thinks for a little bit of time and he makes the call as well. So going three ways to the flop, everyone's biggest nightmare is getting their aces cracked, especially in a tournament whenever you can't add on chips. So we're looking for a good board here, which we do get. We end up flopping the nuts on ace eight three with two diamonds. So a magical board for us. It checks it over to me and I decide to put out a 2000 chip bet here, trying to get value from all of my opponent's flush draws. If they have the last ace, that'd be great. They might call one or two bets. And if they have a weaker pair like tens or jacks, they might call one bet as well. So I put out 2,000 chips, the big blind snap calls, and the cutoff ends up making the fold. Heads up here to the turn, which is a brick. It's a six of hearts. We still have the nuts. And now the big blind checks it over to me. And given the fact that I played that king jack hand pretty aggressively and the whole table saw, I'm hoping my image will help me here. Whenever he checks it over to me, I decide to put out a big massive bet, trying to make it look like I'm trying to bully the table. Maybe he'll still hero call me with an eight or a flush draw. So I put out a 7,000 chip bet. He thinks for about 45 seconds and unfortunately folds. We have now moved on to level three, blinds at 100, 200. I look down at pocket nines, raise it up to 500 and get one collar. Flop comes out king high and I decide to see a bet small on this flop, given the fact that we're heads up and my opponent pretty quickly folds, so take down another small one. Level four, blinds at 200, 300. We look down at ace, jack of spades. There's a raise by a passive player to 800 and normally I would three bet here, but given the fact that he'd been doing a lot of limping and now he decided to raise, I decide to just call in the cutoff. The small blind makes the call for 800 and the big blind makes the call. So going here to the flop, which is awful for our hand. Three, six, seven with two hearts. Whenever it checks to the initial raiser, he puts out a big pot size bet and we fold. The last hand before a 15 minute break, we are on the button and look down at pocket aces again. What a beautiful sight. There's an under the gun raise to 1300. There's a hijack call for 1300 and the cutoff makes the call. What a dream spot here. We're going to put in a three bet. That is for sure. Raise. Raise makes it a 5,000 now. I put in a massive three bet to 5,000 chips. I'm hoping this looks like I'm trying to steal the pot or try to bully the table around. The under the gun player ends up pretty quickly making the call for 5,000. The cutoff and the hijack end up making the fold. Heads up in another three bet pot with pocket aces which comes out jack high. Whenever my opponent flats my three bet out of position, I put him on a lot of pocket pairs like pocket nines, tens, jacks, and queens. So this jack is a little bit worrisome, but whenever he checks it over to me, I'm not going to be giving him a free card. I put out a C bet here of 4,500. Now my opponent thinks for about two to five seconds and decides. All of his chips are going in the middle. He shoves all in and I make the snap call. I show pocket aces and we have video. Thank you. You're a little shaky to start. Sure. <laughs> Alright guys, we are on our first break here, running pretty good so far, that is for sure. Ended up getting pocket aces twice that held up, making that backdoor king eye flush. I think I have about 50,000 chips, so we're running pretty good. Going back in now, playing another four levels, and I'll get back to you guys after that. 
We are back from our 15 minute break. We have about 50,000 chips in our stack. We started at 20,000, had a little hiccup there early on, but now we are running good and playing good. Moving on to the next hand. Only four hands into level five. We look down at pocket aces again. Three times in the first three hours. This is just crazy. The blinds are at 200, 400 now. There is a limp from under the gun. Small blind completes and I raise it up to 2,000 in the big blind. The under the gun limper pretty quickly folds. And now the action's on the small blind who seems like a guy who wants to see some flops. He thinks for about 30 seconds. He has a pretty big stack as well, so I'm praying for a call. But unfortunately, he gives his cards back to the dealer, so no more action here with pocket aces. But we went 3 for 3 today so far, not getting our aces cracked, which is pretty good. Can't complain about that. Next hand we're going to go over here. I have 10 9 of hearts in the big blind. There's a limp for 500 before an action aggressive player ends up putting in a raise to 2,000. I think this is a defend here given the fact that I have such a good hand in the big blind. So I make the call for 2,000 and the limper ends up folding. A little spoiler alert here, guys. This ends up being the biggest pot we play all tournament, so get ready. The flop comes out 10 5 3 with two hearts. So we flop top pair and a flush draw. This is a massive flop for us. I end up checking it over to my opponent who puts out a 3,000 chip C bet. Now we have to make the first big decision of the hand. Should we just check call or should we check raise all in? I look at his stack and he has about 15,000 behind, which means if I check raise all in, it would be about a 5x raise, which seems good. I think I can put a lot of pressure on some of his hands. However, I decide to just make the call for 3,000, which I think is pretty bad. I think I should just always be check raising all in here. The turn card is the seven of diamonds, definitely not the card we wanted to see, doesn't help us at all. I put in the check and now my opponent continues to put the pressure on. He puts out a $5,500 bet and I don't really know what to do here. He only has 10,000 chips behind. Should I call or should I shove? And I decide I'm not going to fold here, so I decide to go with it. I put them all in. He makes a snap call. I show 10 nine of hearts and he shows pocket jacks. So we are behind here going to the river. We need some help, which is the king of diamonds. We don't get there. We end up doubling this guy up. That was a rough hand. Really crushed our chip stack now. We have about 21,000 at 300, 600. With about 35 big blinds, we're still doing okay. The next hour or so, we pick up some pretty playable hands, but we just cannot get anything going. Can't smash any boards and end up losing about three or four hands. So our chip stack dwindles now. We have about 14,000 chips at 400, 800. So about 17 big blinds before looking down at queen nine of clubs in the big blind. Cutoff makes it 2,500 and I make the call. Going heads up here to the flop, which is ace, queen, seven, no club. I check it over to him and he puts out a thousand dollar bet. I'm not going to fold a pair for just a thousand chips. So I make the call. Going to the turn, which gives us two pair. It's a nine of hearts, which is great for us. I check it over to him and he puts out another bet. And obviously the only thing I can do here is shove all in. 12,500 going in the middle. He makes a snap call. I show two pair and he shows ace jack. So we got a hold here for our tournament life. The river comes off the four of hearts. So we don't get counterfeit. I look over and he does not have a heart. So we end up getting the full double up here. 12,500 chips coming our way plus the chips in the middle. This was the same player that we doubled up earlier with that 10 9 of hearts versus jacks. So it feels good to get some of our chips back. After our second break of the tournament, we look down at pocket 10s. Blinds are at 500, 1,000. Our chip stack is about 27,000 now. So we have about 27 big blinds. Early position raises to 2,600. And I just make the call. I could be 3 betting here, but given the fact that I have 26 bigs, I just want to see a flop first and see what happens. So going heads up here, which the flop is not the best for us, it comes out ace high. On this board, my opponent puts out a $1,500 C bet, which is pretty small. And on this board, I think I have to float just one time. He can have some Broadway cards or some under pairs like seven, sixes, or eight. So I make the call for $1,500. The turn card is a six, and now my opponent checks it over to me, which is pretty great news. He is the big stack of the table. He has about 100,000 chips, so there's no way he's checking an ace to me. So I'm pretty sure I have the best hand. So I put out a protection slash value bet of 5,000 trying to get him to fold his hands like king high or queen high with some overcards, or possibly get him to call with a nine or a worse pair. He ends up thinking and letting his hand go. So we end up taking down another pot here, which is much needed in level number nine. Some time goes by and we can't get into any good spots here. The blinds are now 600, 1200. I have ace jack of diamonds from under the gun. I min raise to 2500. My chip stack is about 30k. So I have around 25 big blinds. I make it 2500 and I end up getting four callers. So going five ways to the flop. King 8 6 with two diamonds. We flopped the nut flush draw. We didn't make a pair, but this is pretty damn good. The small blind thinks for a little bit of time and decides to lead out. 
he leads out for 15,000 chips. I don't really like that he's leading out here into all these people. He's probably pretty strong. I don't think he's just doing this with a single player hand, but I only have about 20 some big blinds left in a big multi-way pot with a nut flush draw. There's just no way I'm folding. Best case scenario is that he has a king and I have an overcard and a flush draw, or possibly he has a flush draw as well. So I decided to go all in here. About 29,000 chips going in the middle. The action is back now on the small blind and he makes the snap call. What do you guys think? Is he gonna hit it or not? From what I told you before. I have a bad feeling after Shit, what sure you said you last time. <laughs> no. It's black. Oh, oh, it's so Sorry. You yeah. Did I sweep? Yeah, you are. I know. You have 50, you said. No, no, I lost, I lost, I lost. I said it also. It might not be exactly right. You, know like. you only need 30. All right, guys, that is it. We are done. We are out of the $400 multi-day tournament. We started off the day running super hot. Got pocket aces three times, made that backdoor flush with king jack of spades. We had a $50,000 stack, and then we lost that big pot there with 10 nine of hearts versus pocket jack, so that cut us about in half. And then the rest of the two or three hours, we just couldn't get anything going. No pairs, really just nothing, just folding, folding, folding. Ended up having about 20-ish big blinds, ace jack of diamonds, flopped the nut flush draw in a huge pot, got it all in there versus a set, and we hit our flush, but he ended up hitting a full house on the turn. So just that extra tilt factor there that we ended up getting there, and it was no good. So that is it for this one. I'm glad I was able to show you guys a tournament vlog, but we're going to go back to cash. That's our bread and butter. The tournaments are fun, but the cash is where it's at. That is for sure, but hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, I'll see you.